Well, another example of a functional implication of a damaged glycocalyx is a study that we did on leukocyte adhesion, so the inflammatory response. Now, now we're looking at a small collecting venule, a little bit larger vessel of about you know, 30, 40 microns in diameter. And on the left, just outside the field of view, we impaled a small glass micropipette into this small venule, allowing us to perfuse the venule every few seconds with a saline solution with or without enzymes like heparinase or hyaluronidase to break down glycocalyx. And each time we flush out the blood, you see the slowly moving transparent cells, which are leukocytes, the inflammatory cells. And on the normal healthy conditions in the presence of a healthy glycocalyx, it would not stick to the wall. They would just slowly roll over glycocalyx uh, to see if there's any damage that they need to repair. And we measured what happens uh, with the level of sticking uh, leukocytes if you remove glycocalyx by injecting enzymes to remove glycocalyx. So these are two examples of what happens with the number of leukocytes sticking to the endothelium. On the left, on the dotted line, we injected oxidized LDL cholesterol as a method to damage glycocalyx. And as soon as we inject the oxidized LDL cholesterol within 30 minutes, you see there's a high level of increase in the number of leukocytes sticking to the wall, causing a local inflammatory response. Similarly, at the dotted line, if we now inject specific enzymes, again, like heparitinase to break down the heparin sulfate proteoglycans, again, as soon as glycocalyx is damaged, there's a huge increase in the number of leukocytes sticking to the endothelium, again, demonstrating that the vessel wall becomes very sticky uh, when you damage glycocalyx. Already at that time, we tried to see if we could repair glycocalyx by injecting similar polysaccharides like heparin sulfate back into the bloodstream. Yeah. This slide shows you that we are injecting dye-labeled uh, heparin sulfate proteoglycans into the small venule. And after stopping the injection, we could see that the dye-labeled polysaccharides were associated with the luminal surface, again, of the endothelium. So after the damage, if you present exogenous polysaccharides similar as glycocalyx polysaccharides into the bloodstream, they almost instantly will stick to the endothelium and rebuild a new glycocalyx. So if you zoom in a little bit, you can see that this fluorescent lining is now on the luminal surface of the endothelium, again, rebuilding a glycocalyx of a couple of microns in dimension. And after rebuilding glycocalyx, if you then again measure how many leukocytes stick to the vessel wall, we found that introducing the uh, heparin sulfate polysaccharides or heparin polysaccharides, which are very similar, we could lower the number of leukocytes sticking to the wall by 50%. Uh, we were happy uh, to find a 50% reduction, and we were even more happy when we realized that this 50% reduction was due to a 100% reduction on the side that we treated. Because if you look back at these images, we injected therapeutic on the left side of the vessel wall, and then the bloodstream would take the polysaccharides downstream, and it never reached the other side of the vessel wall. So we did repair glycocalyx on the left side of the vessels, and 100% prevented the sticking of the leukocytes. On the other side, the vessel wall glycocalyx was still damaged, and it was still a normal level of inflammatory response and normal level of leukocyte sticking.